But let's get into the game and find out exactly how both of these players want to approach this. Marco is going to have the Shadowrunner Calyrex and the Incineroar right away, and Alex leading with the Iron Hands and the Tornadus. Iron Hands will take the Intimidate right off the bat, so not the greatest of positions to be in, especially considering the Ghost type staring it down. But you do still threaten some good fighting type damage into Incineroar if you like. You have the option for the Chi and the Traffic Ghost in the back, as we're seeing, which are both great answers to the Shadow Rider Calyrex uh, perennially. And so Alex, even though it might not be the greatest of lead positions, certainly not off to a bad start, especially because this Calyrex on Marco's side not boosted just yet. No, so I think you feel pretty safe about being able to switch something in to try to tank a hit. So this Chiyu doesn't feel too bad, except for the fact that it's Speeds of Ruin are actually going to drop this special defense of everything else on the field. So the Scary Face heading into the Shadow Rider Calyrex is certainly one way that you can deal with this Shadow Rider Calyrex's speed. And it doesn't really get punished here because you don't actually take any damage. You're able to deal with this Calm Mind instead. That is a, kind of a risky swap into the Chi Yu. You do have the option to take a possible fake out into that slot if Marco wanted to prevent Iron Hands from faking out itself, or even an Astral Barrage if Marco opted to go straight for the offense. But luckily, Alex does not even take a parting shot. The Chi Yu comes in completely for free, and the scary face into Calyrex Shadow Rider means that the Chi Yu will be outspeeding at this turn. And even though it got the Calm Mind special defense boost, a Dark Pulse is still very, very scary. Yeah, that dark, dark Pulse is definitely going to be a little bit terrifying. At the very least, you can Terra to Fairy. So the Shadow Rider Calyrex isn't going to be too upset about that one. But then you still have to worry about taking something like an Overheat or a Heat Wave, which could be very difficult to deal with. Marco, though, did just switch in this Rapid Strike Urshifu. It is on the field now. The Urshifu is holding the Focus Sash, so it will not be outspeeding this Chiyu, uh, unless we see some more funky Urshifu <laughs> Chiyu speed interactions like we saw earlier on today. But given that they're both Focus Sash, I would imagine they're both trained to be as fast as naturally possible, which means Chiyu should be acting first. And of course, you have the option to go for another Scary Face if you like. Even a Tailwind is a good option here. The Calm Mind coming up from Calyrex means that it is you know, in a, in a more threatening position, but that minus two speed drop from the scary face means it's going to have a rough time staying on the field unless it wants to terrestrialize, which could then open it up to a super effective Terra Star Storm later on. Well, it's not going to take that smoke. It's just going to go for the protect, make sure that it's going to keep itself safe from this heat wave. And the heat wave moving first as well has the opportunity to just take out this Focus Sash right away. So when Tornadus goes for the Leak Wind Storm, it's just going to have to hit, and it's going to be able to connect and do there a lot is. of damage onto the Zershifu to just get the knockout. Really big turn from Alex there. That Scary Face comes in really handy because that's a pretty safe play Alex can make there. The Focus Sash is intact on the Urshifu on Marco's side, but thankfully the Heat Wave and the Bleak Wind Storm, neither of which are known to be the most accurate moves, both connect and Marco goes down a Pokemon really quickly. And, and more importantly, I think a Pokemon that very heavily threatens Traffigus. Absolutely, because you have the opportunity to go for something like the Close Combat into that slot, or even just be able to do the Surging Strikes, which we know could still be neutral damage into that Pokemon. But this Intimidate coming out from the Incineroar, you're not feeling too bad about it, but you do have to worry a little bit about the Fake Out that could come through. The nice thing about the, uh, the, the Scary Face there, as opposed to going for a Tailwind on that first turn, is that you can't stall out a Scary Face Speed Drop. Even if, like, if, if Tailwind had gone up, for example, there That's would be true. one or two more turns, then Marco's Calyrex would be safer. But now Marco, unless he swaps out this Calyrex with the plus one special attack and special defense, you'd have to waste that Calm Mind Boost to reset the speeds, and clearly not willing to do that right now. No, I think you lose so much momentum because something else in the back is gonna have to take a hit. And there isn't a whole lot that would want to switch in to something like this Chi Yu. So the Dark Pulse, this Terra Fairy is gonna help make oh. sure that the Shadow Rider Calyrex doesn't take too much damage, but the Calyrex is oh, going no. to avoid this Blake when it is a double miss. So no damage down, and this Shadow Rider Calyrex gets a little bit more wiggle room to go for another Calm Mind. The double Calm Mind here means that its special defense is now doubled, thanks to the plus two boost. Chi Yu will take a parting shot for its troubles. A really unfortunate miss there. Surely would not have taken either KO. When you're using something like Choice Specs, Choice Specs Terrapagos, you really, really want that chip damage to be able to clean up with the Choice Specs Terra Star Storm at the end of the game. I, I like that Calm Mind again, because the Terra Fairy means that you are very safe against this Chi Yu. Even with the Beads of Ruin, you're doing, you know, you're resisting Dark Pulse very well. Fire moves are still neutral. And once the Terrapagos comes in, even though you have Terrastalize, which enables the Terra Star Storm to become super effective, the two special defense boosts negate that very well. So you're now essentially taking neutral damage from it. Yeah, absolutely. And this Chiyu doesn't have anything like Snarl, so you're right. also not really that worried about having your special attack actually drop. Plus, uh, I mean, you've got Covert Cloak too, but right. you know, <laughs> beside the point, 
As we see this Incineroar move back in, Grass and Terrain is also up, so you're going to get a little bit of HP recovery at the end of every turn, which is certainly going to help with this Calyrex's sustainability on this game. As Chiyu comes, does not want to take a fake out from that Rillaboom, and Tornadus goes for a Tailwind, which will boost the speed of Alex's team for three turns following this current one. Astral Barrage comes out, the plus two boosted Astral Barrage should be enough for a KO into this Tornadus pretty easily because that Astral Barrage is so powerful. Big win at KO there, but if you are Alex, that's a turn you're setting up Tailwind as you're getting knocked out. That's a nice free switch. It's nice because if you bring in the Iron Hands now, it's certainly going to be faster than this Incineroar. So you can kind of ensure that the fake out would be faster than this one. But I think it's also a nice opportunity to just bring in your Karapagos knowing that you have three turns to make this count. You sure do. And of course, the scary phase in conjunction with the Tailwind probably means that Iron Hands will outspeed this Calyrex. I think you need both of them. Iron Hands is pretty slow and Calyrex is very, very fast. But at minus two speed with the Tailwind up, a Heavy Slam could come out, which would also take advantage of this Fairy-type Terrestrialization. Won't be the case just yet, though, as we do see the Terrapagos take the field. Shiyu not wanting to take a Fake Out or to break its Focus Sash, and also reset that Special Attack drop. We'll switch out. Or uh, lower the Special Defense of its Terrapagos True, friend. very true. That would not be very good in the face no. of a plus two Shadow Rider Calyrex, I would say. Plus three, actually, I guess, if you consider the Grim Nabus. Right. But this Terrapagos is going to to take that Stellar Terra. Some good spread damage potentially coming through onto Marco's Pokemon. And also, you get rid of the grass, which is a kind of nice bonus effect of yeah. this Terra Shift. Fake Out comes through. Trapagos will flinch because it does not carry the Covert Cloak like some other Trapagos do. Draining Kiss comes out there. A huge chunk of damage into that Trapagos. The plus three Terra Fairy Draining Kiss will be able to two-hit KO Trapagos. That's a huge chunk of damage. And I really, really like this Iron Hand swap as well. Now that the Incineroar is on the field, you have the option to threaten it with a big Drain Punch. You also are threatening a Heavy Slam and, of course, the Fake Out support as well. So this Trapagos takes a big chunk of damage for its troubles. But I think that was still the right play to, for Alex to make. I really don't think you can risk your Chi Yu kind of taking that Focus Sash, getting knocked out. And of course, you're at minus one special attack anyway, so you weren't accomplishing too much. Yeah, and it's not a bad Pokemon to be able to have if you aren't able to deal with this Rillaboom. And similarly, maybe the Incineroar, just because you know that it's only going to be a knockoff that this Incineroar has as an attacking move. So Marco goes into this next turn, protecting this Calyrex as it is anticipating this her Star Storm. While the Calyrex is going to be protected, this Rillaboom sure is not. It has the Assault Vest to help it out just a little bit. And so when you see that Terra Star Storm go through, it's just such a little bit of chip. The Drain Punch to oh, follow it up, that was almost. so close with the critical hit, but not quite enough to be able to actually get the knockout. And this is tough because this Rillaboom has Fake Out. It does. You, the Fake Out is here to stall out one more turn of Tailwind from Alex's team, and more importantly, protect the Calyrex Shadow Rider on Marco's side from a possible Terra Star Storm or Heavy Slam. Iron Hands is the target of choice, though. No Heavy Slams this turn. And that's actually really big here for Alex, because now you're able to get Terra Star Storm down onto both targets. It's definitely plenty to pick up the Rillaboom, not quite enough to take care of the Calyrex, but this Calyrex has an opportunity to actually heal itself. So that is a little bit difficult to deal with when you know that it's going to be a Terra Fairy boosted draining kiss to finish off this Terrapagos and also get a little bit of healing. That healing actually might come in really handy here. The Incineroar on, on Marco's side will come back in and intimidate this Iron Hands, which could make it, be a big difference maker in terms of that Heavy Slam coming through. Of course, the Chi on Alex's side, still alive and well, will be able to come in and keep its Focus Sash intact, but still at plus two special defense. This Calyrex is looking like it's in a very strong position. It really does. It, you, have, you need that speed as well for this Iron Hands. Otherwise, and plus four? Is this Iron Hands just going to get knocked out to one Draining Kiss? It might, especially because exactly, <laughs> Beats of Ruin comes back in, and unfortunately for the Iron Hands, it is affected by its partner Pokemon's ability, which means its special defense is cut by 25%. The plus four Draining Kiss, even though it's not the strongest of moves naturally, might actually just be enough for a one-hit KO here. That would be wild. That's it why would. you can see Alex actually just double into that slot. Chiyu is going to take the fake out, though, so that Focus Sash is now off the table, but the Draining Kiss gets to move first. That's why Tailwind was going to be so important, and this Iron Hands... <laughs> Basically, just gets one hit knocked <laughs> out by a draining kiss, and this Calyrex is back.
back up to full HP. If you had told me not long ago that draining kiss would be like a very common move in, in a metagame in the BGC, <laughs> I would have been shocked. But it makes such perfect sense with this kind of set. Calm Mind gives you so much bulk that you're actually really not prepared for a lot of the time with Calyrex. Yeah. And draining kiss in conjunction with Terra Fairy, surprising amount of damage and also importantly a lot of healing, especially when you're draining kissing at 230 HP Iron Hands. That's like <laughs> oh a free 150 HP back. That is wild. But it's just going to be a protect tier. There's still grassy terrain active for two more turns, so there is a possibility that this Chiyu could get its Focus Sash back and re-enabled by going back up to full HP from some of this recovery. It's not going to be quite enough just yet. So you could try to go for the double protect here or just try to go for the knockout. And it is able to move first thanks to that scary face onto the Calyrex. So the overheat, just doing about half. You would have needed a critical hit there in order to knock out this Calyrex and you don't get that. You would have needed a critical hit on Calyrex and probably a few one in Cinnabar as well. You're really not doing a whole lot to most Incineroar. As you get to get these calm minds of Scott free as we head into game number two. Marco Silva is leading the series 1-0. Needs one more in order to keep this undefeated run and head into day two. And it's going to be off the back of the Shadow Rider, Calyrex, and Incineroar, or at least try. I kind of like this switch up lead from Alex here. It threatens a lot more damage right off the bat. Whereas leading the Tornadus, while it was helpful to have that support option, we saw the Calyrex be at minus two speed that entire game and it just didn't really end up mattering because the Calm Mind went up pretty easily. So now you have Trapagos, which threatens, you have the Dark Pulse there, you are threatening uh, a one hit KO unless the Calyrex terrestrializes. And of course, Chiyu threatening with his own Dark Pulse. So Incineroar has to pick only one of these two Pokemon to fake out. And the Calyrex is, is scared of an attack from either one. Yeah, it really is. Because, I mean, you could you could honestly double up into that slot if you wanted to. But there is a Terrestrialization. Alex was thinking about potentially going for something like a Terra Star Storm in anticipation that this Calyrex might just go for that Terra Fairy. And it feels like you have to. This Chi Yu has that Dark Pulse. That's super effective. And just a one-hit knockout if you're able to land that into the Calyrex without that. So instead, it is just going to be this Tropagos taking the fake out. It's not going to get a chance to actually move this turn. But... Calm Mind Boost, free for the taking for Marco's Calyrex. It's like a very, very smart fake out target there. You cover a possible Terrestrialization Terra Star Storm uh, with the fake out, which ensures that the Tropicos will flinch and not attack this turn. Calyrex does get a Calm Mind Boost, up, which means it takes that heat wave very well and also protects itself from a possible Dark Pulse thanks to that Terra Fairy. Critical hit on the Incineroar, not insignificant actually when you're playing a team like this Choice of X Tropicos. You kind of have to take as much chip damage as you can get, especially into something like Incineroar, which is usually very bulky on the special defense side. What's tough too is that Marco doesn't have an opportunity here to go for the Astral Barrage just yet. Right. Because that Serapagos is still sitting as a normal type and still would be even if it was stellar, but it means you're not doing valuable spread damage at the moment. And also, there's not really a great way to break this Chiyu's Focus Ash either. Exactly. And if you let this Trapagos sit on the field and go for something like a Trastalize uh, Terra Star Storm, with only plus one special defense, the Calyrex may not even be able to survive that. But this is great from Alex. Able to get the Dark Pulse into the Incineroar oh, and a single it. target Terra Star Storm down as well, calling the Protect beautifully to go after the Incineroar. That was a really beautiful play from Alex. You know, the, the Calyrex protecting itself there, I think, made a lot of sense. If you attack with Calyrex and Alex goes for something like a Terrestrialization Terra Star Storm, it most likely gets knocked out there. And Alex, knowing that, calls the Incineroar, trying to go for something like a parting shot to pivot out and reposition so it can support the Calyrex a little bit better. But Alex calls that greatly. I think the, the Dark Pulse there specifically covers up no, he can't even terrestrialize into a ghost type because the, the Calyrex already is just guaranteeing damage there, which means that the Terra Star Storm is enough for a KO. Unfortunately, though, Urshifu comes in and thinks the Terra Shell being broken, you might not be able to survive a close combat. Yeah, so Alex doesn't want to put that at risk. Takes the Terrapagos off the field. This will give you a chance to reset your move if you want to because you trace specs. Brings us in this Moongus that actually has this Rocky Helmet. So you're able to at least even dish out a little bit of recoil there into the Urshifu if it does hit you with something like the close combat. Draining Kiss also yeah. actually doing quite a bit of healing there, but you can see it how it's also <laughs> going to deal contact, deal a little bit of chip with the Rocky Helmet. And Urshifu to follow that up too is going to take even more. Great Amoongus swap there, especially considering we did not see the Amoongus 
come to game one for Alex. So a nice switch up there. Some really nice Rocky Helmet recoil damage. And now this Urshifu might be in range for something like an Overheat coming out of this Chiyu. And more importantly, Chiyu still has not had its Focus Sash broken. Really, really strong position here for this Chiyu because it is threatening a KO into Urshifu. And Overheat into Calyrex might also just be enough. We saw it do a good chunk of damage with an Overheat, even at the plus two special defense last game. This swap could have been really risky, though. You can True. see that Alex tried to go for a swap on this Amoongus, but it's going to be the Urshifu that leaves the field first. Could you imagine if a close combat went into that slot again? Yeah. Alex is calling the bluff. It's going to remove the Amoongus and bring this Terrapagos back out, hoping that this is going to be the moment that this Terrapagos can take advantage of the Urshifu not being on the field. And it's also not going to fall victim to the Astral Barrage either. And this GU is also not going to feel too bad about it either. This could be a big attack Ooh, coming out from Shayu here. It is a crit, but Heat Wave comes through. We'll do a big chunk of damage to Rillaboom and bring Calyrex very low as well. Really, really smart switching from Alex so far in this game. We got the Amoongus in on the Close Combat and Draining Kiss for double Rocky Helmet Recoil. We got the Trapagos coming back in on the Astral Barrage. Now this Calyrex being only a plus one doesn't threaten too much damage. And more importantly, Terra Shell has been restored by the Grassy Terrain, thanks to Marco's Rillaboom. Yeah, so that's really, really big. You don't even have to terrestrialize if you don't want to, but you have to consider whether or not this would be the perfect opportunity, given that you've already done so much damage to everything else that Marco has. The only thing you don't really have going for you right now for Alex is the speed control. So is this something that could get punished as Alex finally decides to go for the terrestrialization onto this Terrapagos to make sure that those Terra Star Storms are going to be spread damage. And also, canceling out that grassy terrain means that grassy glide will no longer be a priority move. If that is something Marco opts for, it will no longer be able to act first, possibly break that Terra Shell, but Fake Out coming out first will flinch Trapagos. Yeah, so you invest this terrestrialization right now and don't necessarily get a chance to have it pay off quite yet. You're still also going to be slower than this Calyrex. And take a look, look at how much damage this Trapagos actually took from the Draining Kiss. The it's already going to be under half. It is. That is a lot of damage from Draining Kiss, and more importantly, a lot of healing, because the Heat Wave trade here, the, I think the Calyrex still comes out on top. I think it healed slightly more than that Heat Wave is doing, thanks to that Calm Mind boost. Urshifu does hit the field again, but unfortunately for Chiyu, this Urshifu is carrying Aqua Jet. So you have the option to go for a priority Aqua Jet with that Urshifu, which will break through a possible protect from Chiyu thanks to the Unseen Fist. And Chiyu does not have the option to go for an overheat to kill this Urshifu anymore. Yeah, and you can't protect in front of an Urshifu either, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> so that the option is also off the table. Like Alex still has a win condition in this matchup. It's not over yet. Marco is down to his final two Pokemon in this game number two. And so Alex is going to take this opportunity to try to pivot around a little bit. Make sure this Terrapagos isn't going to be as, oh. in as much of a threat, but the Astral Barrage calling this switch is going to oh, be a no. double knockout onto the Amoongus and the Chiyu. And maybe as soon as I spoke, this is going to be even more difficult. I, that's a really smart play there. You've got to be really tempted to go for another Draining Kiss into that Trapagos. Heal even more to HP and guarantee that you get damage into that slot. But you cover that so well with the close combat. The Astral Barrage is easily enough to knock out the Chiyu at that state just because it had taken so much damage already. And again, you're still at plus one special attack from that first Calm Mind. And the close combat, thanks to Trapagos taking so much damage from the first Draining Kiss, is easily in close combat range. Unfortunately, now the Flutterman does come in and we have the option for an Icy Wind. This actually could be really big here. I'm not not sure how that speed interaction works between like a minus one Calyrex Shadow Rider and the Trapagos, but there might be a chance Trapagos can act first. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say you oh, even have an cloak. opportunity for something like a Thunder Wave, which I think would have also been a way to be able to deal with that. But yeah, you've got a Culver Cloak on yeah. the Shadow Rider, so even though you're able to get the Icy Wind damage down, it's not actually gonna drop this Calyrex's speed. Yeah. So it's able to move first with the Draining Kiss above this Trapagos yeah. and just get the knockout. So unfortunately, this Terrapagos does not have a way to actually seal the deal here for Alex. And it's going to be down to this Urshifu being able to also change up its moves, having a Focus Sash as a held item instead of a Choice Scarf. And it can just go for a Surging Strikes. It can Surging Strikes. You, you probably have to see the close combat coming through here. The, even, even if Icy Wind did speed drop, let's say, uh, and the Terrapagos was able to get an attack off, uh, the Urshifu 
or well, rather, the, the Fluttermane can only speed control one of these two things at a time, right? So if you could, if you possibly Thunder Wave the Calyrex, that means Urshifu still attacks and gets the close combat off. That's Ice true. Icy Wind is able to drop Urshifu speed, but not the Calyrex because of that Covert Cloak. And one more Draining Kiss seals the deal for Marco Silva. He will be advancing to day two in New Orleans. Seven and zero after that set. What an impressive display of this calm mind. Shadow Rider Calyrex as well as just how to navigate these tricky Trafagos matchups. I mean, I, I've been saying that Trafagos is pretty good into Shadow Rider, but now we've seen two Trafagos Shadow Rider matches on stream and Shadow Riders come out on top. So I might have to reevaluate how they think those matchups play out. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. I'll let you go back to the whiteboard on that there one. There we go. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, impressive stuff from Alex Chan so far. 